And welcome back to Between Bells on Chatter, everyone. I'm Baker Machado in New York, and as we start to see light at the end of the pandemic tunnel, more people are looking for convenient ways to get back around. So enter in the Lime Electric Moped, the company announcing this week the newest addition to their fleet, and it's now available in Washington, D.C. So for more on this, let's bring in the CEO of Lime, Wayne Ting. Wayne, good to have you back here on Chatter. So you were just in Washington yesterday to announce this new launch. So explain to us why expand into Moped and why DC for this expansion? Yeah, Baker, thank you so much for having me. You know, when we see um, the vision and the mission for Lime, we really see a world of a multimodal offering. You know, we're the world's largest e-scooter operator, we're the world's largest e-bike operator outside of China. And now with the e-moped, what we're gonna have is a suite of products that allow a rider to go anywhere under five miles in a city and is able to just use the Lime app alongside public transit. And the vision is that there's gonna be a future state not so far from today where people are not gonna to need to use cars or they're not gonna to have to own a car. And this is a major step in realizing that vision. And DC, of course, is our nation's capital, but it's also a city that's really been at the forefront at the micro mobility transportation um, evolution. And so when we thought about a city that really made sense for this big launch, DC was the city that we um, we're all excited about uh, making our first moped city. Yeah, and we were just showing our viewers basically the three different ride options now available to them through Lime, the bike, the scooter, and now the moped. So are you assuming here, Wayne, that the people are gonna continue to move away from ride sharing you know, cars for the foreseeable future that people are gonna look for more eco-friendly ways to get around here? You know, during the during the pandemic, I think a lot of people took another look at micro mobility and because we're open air single passenger, they really gave us a chance um, and we saw a big boom in ridership. I think that trend is only gonna accelerate in this next phase, in part because transportation is one of the biggest source of greenhouse gas. And, and it's not because we ride too many buses or subways, it's because we have too many cars. And the, the conversation around move from gas to electric is important, but it is woefully inadequate because the reason why cars consume so much energy is because it's 5,000 pounds. We're using 5,000 pound tanks to move 200 pound humans. If we're gonna get serious about the carbon footprint of transportation, we've got to look at new modes, lighter modes, modes like mopeds and e-bikes and um, scooters. And on top of that, we are cheaper, we are faster in downtown financial districts, and, um, and we are more fun. And so absolutely, I think the future of transportation is going to be more multimodal, and it's going to be more bikes, more scooters, and more green. And we saw during the pandemic, Lyft, Uber were really getting hurt because a lot less people were doing ride sharing cars. You guys, by the way, reached 200 million rides in the month of October, which clearly shows there's still a demand for this. You guys are also making it easier for riders with a new appless payment option as well. So that way people don't have to download the app as frequently. Are you at all worried though, Wayne, that might hinder business if people are not downloading the app as much? I think it's going to help business. Um, you know, I think it's always one of the one of the things that we sometimes hear from riders is that I have so many apps um, already on my uh, on my phone. And one of the challenges with micro mobility is that oftentimes you go to a city, you need to download three, four, five apps just to have enough um, access to micro mobility to move around. I think with the appless um, transaction, this means that if you have never tried Lime before, and you can just go up to one of our um, scooters or e-bikes and get the QR code. You can pay with Apple Pay and it's going to allow you to try it without really putting in additional information. If you love us and you want to get access to even better products like Line Pass, which gives you discounts, you can download it in the future. But we actually think that the more we make the access to these products easier and the more we add modes, the less needed is it for, for riders to download multiple apps and all those things benefit consumers, which is going to drive up even greater adoption. Uh, Wayne, we, us here in New York City, we're familiar at least with a little bit of the moped trend, given the fact that Revel was here for so long, but they had to discontinue their mopeds because of safety concerns. So many people were getting injured on them. How much is safety at the forefront of your guys' minds and how much are you thinking about that or if people are going to start using those? Yeah, great question. Safety is the most important goal when we thought about launching eMoped. In fact, I think one of the challenges with the industry is that I'm not sure people have taken safety 
as seriously as they should. And so when we thought about launching eMoped, we wanted to launch with the most comprehensive safety program ever seen in shared micromobility. And this means partnering with the Motorcycle Safety Foundation to put together mandatory training, to put together um, videos of how you ride, as well as DIY um, programs that riders can, can take so that when you take a first ride, you're gonna know how to ride. In addition, we also invested in technology, for example, lifeless technology to ensure that when you take a ride, we know you are the person from your driver's license. We have um, a, a detection sensors in all of our helmet boxes to know that there is a helmet in the box, that you've taken it out, put it on your head, and you put it back at the end of the ride. By investing in better training upfront, by partnering with industry best foundations and investing in new technology, our hope is that we're really going to raise the bar on what safety is the e moped and really bring something very differentiated to our riders in terms of safety. Yeah, that's a very smart idea there. Obviously, we've been talking about Washington, where this is at right now, but what's the expansion plans, Wayne? Are you looking to expand this to other cities in the near future? Absolutely. You know, we have a we have plans to bring this to Paris as our next uh, major expansion city. You know, after that, um, we're going to be taking a hard look at a lot of uh, big cities where Lyme already today has a big ridership. But um, hopefully we'll have something more specific to share. But Paris is our next big city, and we're super, super excited about bringing this to Europe as well. All right. Wayne Ting, the CEO of Lyme. Wayne, such a pleasure to have you here. Thanks so much for joining us.